whether you keep them in your home or love to see them in theirs, these are the creatures that bring us all together. Reptiles. reptiles. We're going to be delving into the experiences of reptile lovers from around the block and around the world. This is the Reptile Talk Podcast. Boom. What is going on, everybody? This is Jeremy Turgeon from Brassman Reptiles. And I'm Rob, and I'm creeping a reel. And I damn near choked <laughs> taking a sip of my drink watching Rob dance. <laughs> In the little square. You gotta be dancing, bro. You gotta have some fun with your life. We are here, but a small glimpse, just a glimmer in the eye of the world. And if you're not spending time dancing and having a good time, look, I'm I'm all out. I'm all for it. I'm just I'm in the middle. It is we are what in the first day of spring. And yes, this, March 21st. This, today is my sister's birthday. Happy birthday to Amy. My hey, sister. happy birthday, Amy. Hey. Um, I am already dealing with the insufferable North Carolina allergy season. So, Bro, the pollen yeah. this year has been crazy. Yeah, so if I uh, randomly mute myself and then appear to be hacking up a lung on the, mm-hmm. <laughs> on the screen, that's exactly what's happening. <laughs> <laughs> Oh gosh, yeah, man. But how are you doing, Rob? It's been it's been a couple I, weeks. It, yeah, it's been a little bit, but uh, I'm doing pretty good. I found my first copperhead of the season yesterday, which was pretty Hell tight. Yeah. There's this area that I suspected was a um, a den, a denning area for them, kind of close to my house, and I saw some in fall. And I was like, okay, this kind of looks like a little den area. It looks like it's got a rock pile that goes down in there, and I was like. I'm just going to come back here in the springtime and just like look and Thank boom, you. what do you know? You know, good size copperhead just chilling right there. And it's kind of been chilly this week, um, but it's been sunny. So I feel like they're probably coming out, catching a little bit of that sun in the early day and yep. then, um, you know, retreating back into there for the evening time. And then also got my black box cages order in so i'm gonna be making yeah. a trip down there to pick up some new <laughs> scrub enclosures here in the not so distant future hell and, yeah uh, that's to say this uh show this evening is brought to you by black box cages if you need a rack right. or a cage make sure that you hit them up one of the quickest turnaround times in the game not only that they've got so many different options for their enclosures um, and they have got just like top of the line, really nice stuff. So if you're thinking about getting a cage or a rack, make sure that you hit up black box cages. That's it. And you gotta, you gotta let I, me know when you're going to take that trip. Cause I, I'll, yes. I'll jump, I'll jump on there with you. Dude, I was looking at, I was like, okay, if I'm going to be making this trip, I might as well spend a little bit of time down there and do some herping while I'm down there and yes. see if I can't find some stuff. Heck yeah, dude. Heck yeah. Absolutely. Absolutely. Uh, tomorrow, oh no, not tomorrow, Saturday, we got our Herb Society trip down to the Venom Central Serpent Center. Yes, I can't wait for that. Dude, that is going to be a blast. I'm super excited. The people who I've been talking to who are going are, are really excited for it. So this should be a really cool trip to take, you know? Heck yeah. It's a great kickoff to spring, man. That's, that's, yeah, what buddy. Is. I'm here for Hell it. yeah. I'm all here for it, dude. So what you been up to? What are you doing? Man, I am, uh, you know, being destroyed by pollen. But uh, <laughs> <laughs> but no, overall, I'm good, man. Just back from uh, the Tinley, uh, March Tinley Expo, which was insane. Uh, I saw videos, looked crazy. It, dude, it was absolutely nuts. I don't know what the official numbers were. Um, as far as heads through the door, but man, when I tell you the line Saturday, so uh, before I get to that, like March, most of us know that like March is like the smaller of the two. The chiller right? show, yeah. yeah. Yeah, it's the chiller show. Like people maybe are getting, maybe if they got an early clutch of ball pythons or something or like carpets or something, maybe they got a couple new hats left over table, from last but, year. Exactly. It's the residuals. There were so many people through the door you'd have thought it was October. I yeah. mean, the weather, the weather's about the same, but, uh, <laughs> <we're> <laughs> Chicago, but dude, I, I was shocked. So, um, if, if you go to, uh, the U S arc Instagram, shout out to us arc, of course, always, um, 
you'll see a glimpse where like I'm walking down that main hallway to get to the line to get your mm-hmm. ticket. I didn't even get like a third down the hall and it's just people. And that line went out the door. It was insane. Yeah. For like general admission, like there's just a crowd of people in that little four year. <laughs> and Brian Potter was like, he had yelled to the uh, guys at the security uh, at the door for doing security. And they're like, just let them in. Like we need to. <laughs> So just let them in. It was freaking insane, dude. But yeah, fun times for sure. Um, but outside of that, man, just pairing up Amazon's got a couple ball Python clutches that'll be due in the next month or so. Um, DG clown stuff and whatever. Um, yeah, you know, cool. Some cool things. It's okay. There's spider in there just to irritate folks. So it's. <laughs> oh, no, I, I like. I like that. That means they're going to be even cooler. So exactly. <laughs> yeah. But uh, but yeah. So I'm I'm, with the exception of being obliterated by the spring allergy season, I'm doing pretty damn good. <laughs> Dude, hell yeah. So hell yeah. But That's I'm tight. super stoked for tonight. Our guest, Jared Carmichael, we're going to be talking about a bunch of cool colubrid species, photography, it's going to be a bunch of different stuff. So without further ado, let's get him in here. Bam. What's going on, dude? What's up, guys? How you doing? Doing pretty good, man. I'm really excited to have you on tonight, man. You're working with so so much cool stuff and, you know, stuff that not a lot of people are focused on. So I'm, I'm hyped to have you on. Well, thanks for having me. Heck yeah. Hell yeah. For people who might not have know about you or heard about you, uh, if you could give a quick, like, how you got to where you're at right now and then kind of what species you're, you're currently working with, that would be great. Um, I started uh, as a kid. I had a garter snake called Stumpy who got ran over by a lawnmower and had a stump tail. Oh, <laughs> oh damn. <laughs> so I, I kept him for a few weeks and let them go but that kind of really got me hooked and i you know always would catch frogs and turtles and snakes and keep them for a while and then when winter came i'd let everything go uh i did actually have a goddard snake that got frozen in the water bowl outside before uh before i was able to let it go and oh damn we, we thought it out and it was like perfectly fine <laughs> it was perfectly fine it was i don't know it was, <laughs> that was like a pretty wild experience. I kept it over the winter and then let it go in the spring. Dang. Uh, and then uh, I, in high school, I got a ball python and then another ball python. And the ball pythons never really did too great in my bedroom setup. It would get a little cold for them, I think. And then I got a couple boas and the boas always ate. They were hardy. <laughs> Don't need an incubator. Yep. And, yep. <laughs> uh, from there, there was a there's a pet shop in Bridgewater, and I still see the guy around. Rob, you might know him. He's like a a shorter guy. He used to work at Noah's. Yep. I'm pretty he, sure his name is Scott. I thought it was like Brandon or I don't know. Maybe it's Scott. Maybe but he's like a firefighter in Brockton, but he used to do berms and stuff. And yep, he was like my gateway into like the weird stuff yeah you know, like, oh. yeah. i i like was in between jobs i had like two jobs i was going to emt school and like i got rid of a bunch of boas and i had a bunch of cages and he was like oh let me set you up with some cool stuff and he like gave me like a chameleon once he gave me a pair of timor monitors yeah uh, viper boa. just yeah. i don't know a bunch of like cool Stuff that was like cheap then, you probably can't even like get now. <laughs> I don't know when the last time I saw Timor monitors were, but for real, you know, probably took it for granted. And then uh, I got out of it for a while, and then I had, I just had a uh, near and dry carpet python for like, I don't know, years and years and years. And then uh, about five years ago, I got back into it and made a reptile room, and here we are. Heck yeah. Uh, yeah. <laughs> How fast it can go from a, I'm just going to dabble back into things to, I got a whole room of these things now. <laughs> yeah. It's, it's, it's ugly. It's not. <laughs> yeah. 
Yeah, oh, yeah. Man. I really need to like downsize and focus. And... <laughs> Nonsense. Keep yeah. everything. Nonsense. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> oh, Bro, man. I remember going to that pet store when I went to Bridgewater and I would go there like when I just had some downtime. And there was one time where he's like, hey, man, I got some, like, extra, like, bigger snakes down in the basement. Will you go feed them for me? And I remember going down there, and, dude, those snakes were, like, gnarly. They, they like, not bad, like, not bad looking, but they were like, I'm coming for you. Yeah. <laughs> and so, I remember one time one, like, almost caught my hand, and I was like, okay, I need to be a little more careful when I'm doing yeah. this. Cause, <laughs> Oh man. Oh man. Yeah. Yeah, it was crazy. I'd give him twenty five bucks and he'd come back with all this crazy <laughs> stuff and I don't know, you can't you can't like even like get any of it now. Like I don't know, like <laughs> what is it, the uh white lip pythons and like yep. cloth pythons, mm-hmm. like all that stuff was trash. And now it's yep. like <laughs> you can't get it. Yep. So true, man. So true. Yeah, I remember that shit. That was, I remember that shit was crazy. One of like the Massachusetts reptile expos, they had like water pythons for fifty dollars. Yep. Uh, you, you want to hear something that'll hurt your your heart? Yeah. Uh, I remember going to the White Plains show, and this was kind of like when I was getting into keeping a lot of bloods and short tails. And uh, Regal Reptiles had a Bismarck ring python, a female aberrant Bismarck ring python that was like maybe two and a half foot long. Mm. And they wanted 200 bucks for it. And I took Uh. it out. I was like, man, this thing's cool. This thing is so cool. And uh, I I knew the guy who was running at the time. And and he was like, dude, I see you all the time. If you want it, I'll do like 150. And I was like, "Uh, I don't know. uh, I'm going to look around. I, I kind of want to get some blood pythons right now. So yeah. I, I think I'm going to pass on this, bro. I still kick myself over that because um, I know that on, on my Facebook, I have pictures of it. So it's, it's like, you know, recently enough where I would have pictures on Facebook of it. And I turned down a $150 beautiful abandoned uh, ring python. Yeah. And that makes me sick to my stomach every time I think about it. <laughs> Rob, when I see you Saturday, I might hit you. <laughs> That's okay. I deserve it. <laughs> Even ten years, fifteen years later, I still deserve it. Yeah. <laughs> only because they've they've only gone up in price tenfold. <laughs> yeah, one hundred and fifty fold, like right. crazy. And like, can you even like get your hands on them? <laughs> Not really. It's I mean, so there's few like and a, far between, man. Yeah, there's like two people who are breeding them on any sort of regularity, so. You know, yeah, it is what it is. Uh, but you've had some some success with like the um the red tail green rats, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I the past three years I've got eggs every year. This year I have three pairs together, so I'm hoping <laughs> I can get some. I have three eggs in the incubator, but that's all I have so far this year for red tail green rats. That's still huge, man. Like, not a lot of people working with those, or, or you know, there's a couple of people who might have one, but there's not people who are like really, really breeding them, you know? Well, so that's kind of what started. I, I wanted them, and I couldn't get my hands on them, and then yeah. I got my hands on like a couple of the silver phase, mm-hmm. and then I don't know. I was like, oh, I want to try to breed these, and of course, I kept buying like females and. They're all females with hemipenes, you know. Yeah, yeah. 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 Buying them, buying them, and finally got like a group together, and then one would die. But I, I don't know. I feel like it's like you gotta like just source good ones, and they either do really well or they do really terrible quickly. It's there's like doesn't seem to be much in between. It's like they crash and burn really quick, or they do really well. Yeah, yeah. I think that when it comes to that sort of thing, that importation process is really, really hard on them. And I, th- I think that because there isn't a huge emphasis on them, it seems like they don't get as much attention as like the higher dollar animals. So yeah. people are less likely to, you know, set them up and spend extra time taking care of them in the importation process. Yeah. And so when you get them, you have to do all this like extra stuff. Yeah. To, to try and get them back on the right track and sometimes you, you just get to them too late you know yeah which was like discouraging at first because like yeah i always tell people i'm like yeah they're like the most expensive cheap snake i ever had because you know <laughs> you get them in you give them all this attention and then they just crash and burn and then you yeah. gotta start over 
Yeah. And then they crash and burn and you start over. But I, don't yeah. know, I have a good, good group going. And then last year I had like two unrelated uh, clutches of eggs. So I got like unrelated pairs into like a bunch of people's hands. So yeah. uh, that'll be cool. Heck yeah. Eventually, hopefully they start doing better. And there's like a little group on Facebook and there's like a couple people working with them and trying to get stuff going. So mm-hmm. we'll see what happens over the next few years. Dude, hell yeah. yeah. That's awesome. I feel, I feel like people just don't know enough about them to really be into them because people love green snakes. Like green snakes are top tier, you know, people yeah. uh, go <laughs> crazy for them. And then it's like, you know, People like colibrids. They're super hard. You know, once they're established and everything, they're super hardy. They're like, and they're the arboreal. So like, it's got all these different factors that would make it such like an ideal snake for people to get into that want something a little different, something a little bigger, something a little more display oriented. And I feel like they don't get the you know attention that they deserve when it comes. I to I think that. the problem is like, people want to get them. The ones you get aren't in great shape and people want to play with them and yeah. I don't know, i've mm-hmm. kind of been treating them like a fish like you look at it Put you don't touch there. it let it be <laughs> yeah i feel like that's yeah, a good that's... rule of thumb for most import things imported things in general just kind of like set yeah. it and forget it yeah. let, like it needs to establish and you poking and prodding at it is is Doesn't doing help. the exact opposite <laughs> even like even like the simple stuff like the boas like i've always noticed like over the years like you know there's like certain parts of the season where you're like all over your animals and there's this other seasons where like you're giving them less attention. And I almost feel like snakes do better when you're giving them less attention. Like, yeah, I don't know, but everyone wants to play with them, which I, I get it. I, I have snakes I play with and then there's snakes I leave alone. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But I think that when they do a little bit more research and looking at like, cause I know that they're just starting to do research on like some monitor lizards and stuff and testing cortisol levels in them due to stress from being kept and the way that they're kept and blah, 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 blah. I think that that will play a role in, you know, follicle development and in, in successful breeding and, and all that sort of stuff. So, you know, don't get me wrong, being in the wild is a stressful environment, but also having a giant, you know, alien grab you up every day and <laughs> pet your face and, you know, trying to get past that instinctual, you know, genetic desire to want to run away is, is a whole different thing than just being in the wild, you know. I also feel like all these people in these Facebook groups, like, are there's only one way to do this. You have to yeah. do it this way. <laughs> if you keep your animal in a tub, you're an animal abuser. We're like, I don't know. I feel like it is really situational. Like my snake, like my, my like baby colubrids I have in tubs, but like the adults I do have in cages, mm-hmm. but I started them in cages <laughs> when I didn't have a snake room, like up in my house and they did terrible and yep. they did better in the tubs. Like if they're, in an area where like people are walking around all the time and like i do think it's appropriate i I get it they're an arboreal snake but i feel like it's more beneficial to them to like keep them hidden and feeling safe than keeping them stressed out because like they are a snake that will stress themselves to death they'll smash Mm -hmm. the side of the cage they'll dart like you gotta like let them feel like they're not being seen yeah I think that does play a huge role. I remember when, uh, when I was in Maine, uh, trying to breed Amazon tree boas with Jason Chapman up there, like the stuff that we tried to keep in cages, we could not get them to reproduce, man. We tried, we tried a couple different cages and then throw them in tubs, babies, you know, like right away, like right away. It's like, you know, racks have had their place. Cages had their place. I think the people who think that, it has to be one way or the other are um, kind of shutting themselves off to, you know, I feel like when people have such a stringent mindset on, on things like that, they are ultimately hurting their own knowledge because there's so many things you can learn from people who keep in racks. And there's so many things you can learn from people who keep things in fully planted bioactive enclosures. And, you know, there's, there's this, 
line that you can kind of ride and yeah. and certain animals do better in one certain animals do better in the other and you know it is what it is yeah right yeah and there's also that element of of individuality right like <clears throat> you have sometimes you have an individual animal within a species that's just like no man i know ball pythons typically do better in racks but i've had mine in a four by two yeah. by 18 cage and it it's thriving yeah <laughs> and you know I, like that's great i agree with that too like mm. you could you can make almost anything work like i have like some of the red tail green rat snakes won't eat unless they are in an enclosed space so like i have like a bunch of these like i forget the brand but they're like tupperware containers like it's a little bit bigger than a six quart tupperware container and half the mm. lid flips up so i stick those in there and uh, leave one of the lids flipped out. I use them as nest boxes, but I also like the snakes I keep together. When one of them's in there, I'll close it, defrost some mice. Yeah, feed the other one. Yeah. Flap one, one in the little box, feed the other one. They're separated while they're eating. If it's mm-hmm. a shyer animal that won't eat it, if I just like leave it somewhere in the cage, it needs like time. It has its time, it has its personal space. You know, I don't know. There's there's more than one way to skin a cat. Yeah. I just feel like need to be more open minded. Yeah. Literally, I I set up uh, some of my grow up scrubs in my room in like 12 by 12 by 18 or 12, 12, 18, 18, 24 enclosures in here, but they're glass. Mm -hmm. And I had like a few people message me and they're like, you keep them in glass enclosures. And I was like, well, like, I, I don't spend a whole ton of time in my room. I spend, like, a little bit of time in my room, but I don't spend, like, a ton of time in my room. And uh, the snakes that I've got in these enclosures are all, like, I've not seen any, like, disturbance in their feeding schedule. They all shed perfectly. They, you know, two of them have been in these enclosures for, I don't know, almost a year now and the other ones have been in there for almost a month now and i've got one of them that's really shy that like it basks when i'm not in the room and then when i come in the room it goes and hides but all the rest of them sit right out in the open do not care they're perched up they come right to the glass to see what i'm doing they like don't don't care at all and and from some of the other people i know who keep scrubs they're like oh man i could never my snakes just would not would not like would not do that (laughs) And they're like, how do you keep humidity? I'm like, I'm in North Carolina, man. The air is humid here. <laughs> like, yeah. It's humid. It enough. is so humid. Yeah, my my like oldest uh, pair of the red tail green rat snakes I have are in uh, Exoterra. They're in one of those 18 by 18 by or 18 by 36 by 36. Yeah, and the big ones. Yeah. I I wish I had a bunch of them. They're they're my favorite. You know, I mean. Yeah, it's hard to keep human, but I have a hose in my room, so it's like literally, it's I'll like spray them. You know what I mean? It's yeah, not, it's not a big yeah. deal. Like, and you know, people online will give me, oh, it's in a glass cage. Like, okay, go keep your hands. Yeah, are you water. breeding them? That's yeah, what I thought. Like, like, <laughs> like, yeah, yeah, right. It's like people just like are like so invested in what everyone else is doing. It's crazy. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah, but that and that's that's the other thing too. And like we've certainly talked about it a lot on this podcast. Like you know just discussing the humidity like where literally where you live plays a difference in, country, in how yeah. you maintain you know those parameters but knowing how to mitigate those those situations like you're in massachusetts so it's going to get drier than it will here in north carolina so what you got a hose you spray it down it's not <laughs> that big of a freaking deal man you know yeah. so yeah there, it goes goes back to what we were just saying before like there's more than one way to skin a cat you know, but husbandry practices are going to vary in different parts of the country. So yeah, yeah. when people lose their minds and like Facebook groups and stuff like that, it's just like you guys have you have no idea. Like well, your sample uh, size like, is very small. If I'm keeping something up in my house, I keep it totally different than how I'd like keep it in my snake room because like mm-hmm. it's a totally mm-hmm. different environment. Yes. Right. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, people don't take that into consideration at all. And, you know what I remember? I remember doing like the nerd tour, and yep. mm-hmm. you guys had like a bunch of. They look like lockers with like little screen boxes on the top, and they were labeled yep. tiger rat snakes. And I was oh, like, yeah, yeah, oh, yeah. like I wonder it's 
So when they're doing these tours, these snakes aren't freaking out because there's a million people in these rooms. And like, I don't know, they're just like, you got to like problem solve the individual like species instead of like everything's cookie cutter. Yeah, exactly. Right. Um, the dude, Speaking of tiger rat snakes, you've got some Spilotes, right? I, I just have a pair. Um, the female's doing really well. The male's like, he just runs, he runs, he runs, he runs. So he's only eating yeah. live and you have to leave it in there overnight. The female's very confrontational, so she's easy to get to Comes eat. right out. <laughs> yeah, comes right out. It's more like a stress reaction that's like getting her to eat, I think. But it's yeah. she's eating, she's doing well. The male's been a pain in the butt, but he's huge. He's like got to be close to nine feet. Dang. Like, Dang. like he won't even try to bite me. He just runs, runs away, yeah. runs away, runs away. Uh, he's been a pain to get Damn. to eat, but. I'm working on it. Yeah. Hell yeah it, dude. I, I, Spilotes are one of my loves when it comes to colorbreds. And uh, I I don't have any right now. Um, but I, I used to keep them. And man, I love, I love Spilotes a lot. They're yeah. such a unique snake. You've never seen a snake eat a rodent so fast in your entire life <laughs> until you've seen a Spilotes eat something because it touches their mouth and then it's gone like almost yeah, immediately so cool. yeah it is cool <laughs> but yeah, you, yeah you're so. actually the one that put them in my hands the first time you yep we're doing like a uh little like show at bridgewater State the bridgewater College. yep yeah i remember that yeah. and i always want them and i got one a few years ago at one of the reptile expos and it like didn't even last 24 hours i was pretty bummed Mm. those imports man it's a bummer yeah Yeah, i remember that day i I brought i don't remember that i don't remember i remember i brought the spilotes and i remember you checked it out and i think there's one other person who wanted to check out the spilotes too and like john McAllister was there and, and and everything so we uh we did like a little tiny demo and just like showed some people on campus some snakes and stuff and and hung out for a little bit but yeah that was I, that was a long time ago <laughs> <laughs> yeah i like can't believe like how big they are and how light they are like they're very like bird like it's they're weird yeah <laughs> And when they puff up too, the the, the, the like triangular <laughs> shape of their body yeah. is just so unique because their their belly scales are so wide that when they're sitting on you, it's like it, they just glide. It's crazy. Yeah. Yeah, that's that crazy. that's that arboreal nature to be able to just weave through branches yeah. and twigs like it's nothing. And they have like the <laughs> long like long feather like scales. They're just really mm-hmm. cool. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. I, I hope I can get them to do well. We'll, we'll see. It makes yeah, you think yeah. of like the um what is it? I oh, mean, I'm probably gonna pronounce it like the fire phanix, the um the bird snakes. I can't remember what the common name oh, is. Oh yeah, those are really oh, the, cool the too. The post seen... yeah, I, I don't know if they degroup those or did I don't know what the mm. they changed that stuff too the one much. That's like it's spilotes, but yeah. it's not spilotes anymore. Yeah, yeah, it's like uh, it's not the sulfurous or something. Yeah, or... fire and axe. Yeah, something yeah. something like that. The like little... reddish and gray speckled ones. Yeah. From the couple of people I was talking to about them, they're like, yeah, you, in order to get them to eat, you have to hold them in your hand and then like whack them with the mouse in order to get them to eat. And I was uh, about trying that with the big the big male spilotes, but I didn't know if do it. disaster <laughs> wouldn't happen. Do it, do it, <laughs> do it. Huge. He's huge. <laughs> but I, I don't know. I like, I would really love to get him off live if I can. Yeah, if he's a runner, honestly, I would try it because, like, I had some um, when when I had the baby Spilotes a bazillion years ago. That's that's how I ended up getting a bunch of them to eat. Was I had to hold them in my hand and then you know tap them on the sides with the the mouse a whole bunch of times. And then eventually they would like defensively bite and they would bite it and they would hold on to it and they're like, oh, this is food. And then they realize it and like and like swallow it down. And then I just found out the like. A couple of the baby corn snakes. I mean, all these corn snakes are eating great now. But like when they, when I was first getting them feeding, a couple of the ones that were like being picky, I tried that and they, they, they took right away. So I was like, I wonder yeah. if this is like the hack that no one talks about. Yeah. How do they live in the wild? <laughs> well, in the wild, they're probably eating like little old baby anoles and shit. They're not eating mice. Yeah, right. So. Yeah. <laughs> 
Yeah, but it seems like some people like do that even when like they're adults. Like that's like how they get yep. the adults to eat too. It's like it seems like a lot of work, but they are cool. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, I mean, yeah. I it's just like when I when I hear of like snakes that just run and run and run, sometimes you gotta like have them restrain in order to get some sort of direction on them for what they're gonna be eating, you know. I had one of the baby oxies, that's the only way I could get it to eat. And then like it worked for like three times and then it kinda like tamed down and it didn't work anymore. <laughs> <laughs> that's uh, funny. Uh, but luckily it started to like drop feed after that. But you know, trade offs, trade offs, that's, that's okay. Exactly. <laughs> Yeah, I. Oh, man. I don't. I'm glad I started keeping colubrids. I wish I, I had a. <coughs> oh, what are they called? The Solomon Island ground boas a few years ago. Oh hell yeah! And um, I had like a gravid import, and I had such a nightmare time with those babies. I wish I had kept colubrids beforehand because I feel like it would have prepared I, a you a little better. A colubrid keeper has to be like dealing with those things because like. <laughs> I I, like, had, like the scenting and like the cup feeding and yeah right it's down. such a pain in the butt i actually did so i sold like majority of the group to uh this kid evan in maine but i kept like oh yeah a handful. Evan K. yeah evan k and uh, yeah. i kept a handful for myself and finally i was like oh i'm gonna try and see if they'll eat salamanders and i had six out of six eat salamanders and they were dead in 48 hours so damn and, Probably should be uh, eating salamanders. Yeah, I wonder if, <laughs> if the the red backs or whatever have got some sort of toxin that's not good yeah, for them. I fed them to garter snakes when I was a kid, but yeah, maybe the garter snakes can handle it. And oh yeah, garter snakes can handle all sorts of shit. I've seen garter snakes eat yeah. toads, and I'm like, toads are toxic, bro. What are you doing? <laughs> Yolo. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Oh Damn. man. This makes that's you wonder awesome. what they're they're eating out in the wild, you know? Yeah. Oh, well, you know what? You guys had those little Solomon Island uh, horn frogs or something like that yep. when I had them. Yep. Oh, I like, yeah. Oh, I yeah, wonder yeah. how much those those cost because they look like they're the perfect size. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and if they have a uh, habitat overlap, it probably is what they're eating little tadpoles yeah. and, and little yeah. froglets from those. That's that true. would make sense. Hmm. Hmm. Little things to think yeah. about. Those are like another snake that I feel like would be like the, the perfect pet because like. They don't need like a lot of heat. They like do perfect at room temperature. Yep. Mm -hmm. They're they're really cool. I think that they don't have the like flashy colors that a lot of people are are into, which is like the one thing that holds them back is they're like mm -hmm. perfect size. They are not usually super nippy. They got mm -hmm. a really unique shape to their body. Their scales feel yeah. really like they're partially keeled and yeah. they're like smooth and also keeled. It's so weird. Right. Yeah. Uh, and uh, I think that, yeah, the babies, getting the baby started is a big pain to do. It yeah, seems like big... there's, there's someone on Instagram that seems to be doing well with them. Like Stygian Exotics? Yeah. No yeah. With us, yeah. yeah. They, they're doing really good with them. I know that, um, that Juggernaut, uh, Elijah, he, mm -hmm. I'm pretty sure he produced the, the Isabel Islands a year or two ago and then yep. there he produced viper bows too and man there's there's somebody else too uh trace harden from from durham he produced the um man the the tree bows it's all on tree bows and he's, oh heck yeah his his group is awesome, bro. His adults are like so freaking cool, and his female's huge. She's like, he, I think he's got two females and two males, I think. And he's got some really cool ones, man. And so he's produced the the tree boas, and I I I love Candoya, so I try and follow each of the people who are working with them and doing the thing with them. I'm pretty sure that there's one other person or two other people who like I can recall are also breeding them, but like, you know, it's on such a, a small scale that it's like, you know, yeah. it's more sporadic. So I, I think Taylor is working with them too. Oh yeah. He, he had gotten one of those gravid, one or two of those gravid imports. <laughs> Cause I remember talking to him after and he's like, 
there's so many babies. Oh my god, and they're so small. I had yes. quarter inch I had quarter inch holes in the container they were in and I was oh. catching them all over my room as a nightmare. <laughs> Yep. <laughs> nightmare. Yep. And I didn't even know any had gotten out because I, I had like twenty babies, and I was like, "Oh, this must be all of them." And then nope. I brought my ki- kids downstairs to show them, and my son's like, "Oh, look, there's some over there." I was like, "Oh no, <laughs> oh no!" It's like some over more. there versus one over yeah. there. It's like no, yeah. there's well, more. When I first started my room, I had like one of those fans, and they were like all like curled up on like the wire on the fan and I was like oh damn oh, oh, god sheesh yeah so there was like a bunch of them on the fan I was like oh no my wife just... <laughs> stay away from that switch damn it yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh man right. that's nuts, so dude. what uh what other species are you working with right now is there like projects that you're working on the past few years has been slippery so I you you um, you remember Frankie Morrissey? Oh yeah, yeah. Oh yeah, I love Frankie. So I re reconnected with him like two or three years ago, and that's been a disaster. It's a disaster. <laughs> he's always sending me home with stuff. He's always like, oh. he's like, oh, I bought a group of these. Take these home. Take these yep. home. <laughs> so, dude, um, I love Frankie. Yeah. So I have Lake Chapala's. I'm trying to breed this year. Ooh. Uh, garter snakes. Um, I did Amazons last year, I, but I only got one baby. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, the rest were slugs, and it, that was cool to see. Like the mother, like eat all eat of it. the slugs. Like, yeah, there's like nothing because like anyone that doesn't have a camera in their room, that's a mistake. Get one. Because like they're Get so one, yeah. cheap. They're so cheap now. But yeah, that was like so cool to like watch and see. Uh, what else do I have going on this year? Um, I'm raising up a bunch of like um, porphyracea stuff. Like I've got Volante, Paltra, Coxeye. Um, Hell yeah. I just got a clutch of Mandarin rat snake eggs, which is kind of cool. Dude, yeah. that's awesome. Hell yeah. Um, our, Mandarin rat snakes are king snake. Are they not? Like, yeah. They, they look like, <laughs> like, like someone messed up somewhere. I was like, this is, this is not a rat snake. This is a king snake. I, don't know. I guess I'm sure there's rules. I, I'm sure. But oh, I got man. some of those. Um, I have, I've got a bunch of oxys right now. Um, I have the Persinum or Pernicium. Oh, yeah. Uh, oh, that's um, which I don't know if the female's grabbed or not. She feels like she's gravid, but. I don't know. We'll see. <laughs> Heck yeah. Uh, I feel like sometimes when you get through, into that point of the breeding cycle, you're like, either there's going to be babies or there's not going to be babies, man. Yeah. I don't know. <laughs> yeah. Um, I still have a bunch of boas. I'm I'm trying to like downsize and I'm just doing like more like weird projects than like mm-hmm. trying to like keep up with the trends because that it's that's it's so crazy. How like yeah. it fluctuates and changes. So now I'm just like trying to like make stuff that I think looks cool and I want to keep. Like I have like yeah. some like type one, <laughs> type two Annery cross stuff. And I'm trying to see like I have some like really weird looking uh Annery stuff going on. Not that like I'm doing anything with them, keeping it back and we'll see what happens with that. But I have like a female that should be ready this year and she almost looks like purple on the sides like so i don't know i'm excited to see what happens with that not that it's like really going to be like something i can like sell i've been doing a lot of wholesaling with the uh boa stuff yeah mm-hmm. saving me saving me a lot of headaches i keep some stuff like to do like the shows and stuff but just trying to like keep it simple and enjoy keeping snakes instead of making it a headache <laughs> Uh, what else yeah, I- it's it's funny because a lot of people are like, man, I want to get into breeding snakes full time because I don't like talking to people. And I'm like, if you don't like talking to people, breeding snakes full time, your whole job is talking to people and selling them snakes. Yeah, yeah well, that was that was definitely like a, a harsh reality for me is like selling <laughs> snakes is not as fun as making snakes. Exactly. Yeah. They are two they are two different yeah. jobs, very much yeah. so. Yeah. yeah. It is not fun. Everyone wants your snake for fifty dollars. Everyone yeah. 
wants to, you know, keep it in a microwave and tell you, like, you sold me a bad snake. What do you mean I can't keep it in the microwave? They're like, I oh put it in there for 45 minutes on yeah. high. Why yeah, did it die? Fine. And you're like, uh, I said to put it in a PVC <laughs> enclosure with a heat panel. They're like, that's a microwave. We are like, no, no, no. No, no it's well, that, not. That's like, an, like, I don't know. I like, don't really like arguing with people. That's a lie. I do like arguing with people, but like not like people I'm like <laughs> selling stuff to. Like, like oh well, I heard online that you should keep it like this. Then keep it like that. I don't. Yeah, care. then keep like, it like that, bro. Like, like, do it yeah, yeah, It's yeah. your day. <laughs> you know, I don't know. It's your day. <laughs> I'm taking that line yeah. at the next expo. I have to bend. <laughs> but it's I, your day. <laughs> yeah, I. But I had a lot fun at the last show I went to. I did more like trading and you know I Heck yeah. nothing crazy. And I've been making like not like less expensive <laughs> stuff, but like I'm wholesaling the like expensive stuff for less than I probably would get at the show. But like I feel like it's easier to make the the pet type sales yeah. of the shows you know what i mean yeah. like, oh, right. check out this cool albino or this hypo you know it's not yeah. exciting to a lot of the people but the people that just want a pet snake like that's then, they and they can exciting. afford an albino yeah dude. yeah for sure mm-hmm. especially albino boas are so eye-catching especially when they're yeah. little yeah i yeah. feel like a, like a sun glow bow constrictor is like the coolest bow constrictor because <laughs> like they still look awesome when they're like big uh, yeah they're underrated yes for sure i think it's funny because like so many people are like oh man i want i need moon glows and i'm like moon glows are cool when they're babies but then as they get older they get significantly like less <laughs> yeah they get <laughs> yeah. significantly cool less cool looking um and then you get a sun glow and it's like oh it's pretty it's really pretty when it's a baby and then it gets older and like a lot of them get even prettier they get like yeah. more like pink or red on them and it's like that's that's still a cool boa you know that's like, I I kept, I'm like, I have like a lava line pairing I'm doing this year, but even like yeah. the past few years, I've like held back like a bunch of like really cool pink boas and like the sun goes cool, but even like the normal boas that like retain the pink are mm-hmm. pretty cool. Mm-hmm. Yep. The, yeah, those, dude, that's awesome. All those, those cool, the, when the first time I bred uh, BCIs, that was one of the things that caught my attention, like right from the rip as I was pulling babies. I was like, oh, look at the pink on this snake. Yeah. Like that's just, that's different, you know? So yeah, that's, that's definitely cool. Yeah, that's awesome. Oh, so really are there any other, so you said you uh, <laughs> got Mandarin rat eggs. That's awesome. Yeah. I guess they those. historically are kind of considered like a really hard species to breed, huh? I don't know. I don't know. I don't like, <laughs> I don't know. I've like been like so much less involved with like, which I it's like sad kind of like I try to like involve myself like less in the community and like ask less questions because like it, I feel like it's been more of a headache than a resource now. Than it's worth. Yeah. That's and even fair. like yeah. on online i feel like i don't know what it is it might be like a safari thing because i am like an apple person but i feel like even like when you like look stuff up online like there's just like not as much stuff on the internet as there was before like i don't know if like all the forums are gone now so you can't (laughs) even like find the old posts and stuff yeah so yeah it's like buying a lot of books on ebay (laughs) yep that's that's the way to do it man it's as as social media is taking over like all of that like genuine information that was around 20 years ago that was easy to find online is now like on page 58 of google search results because it's all just get buried under the social media chaos so yeah yeah, it's definitely a little more frustrating to try to find solid info (laughs) or like i don't know like if i have like a real question i'll just like reach out to someone that like i know like actually has an idea what they're doing because again yeah. like they're not gonna give you the cookie they'll just point you in the right direction you know what i mean and you kind of yeah. like, can figure it out from there yeah yeah absolutely so i i gotta ask because it's it's uh, this selfish 
uh, desire in me. So what what attracted you to the Porphyracea? Because that's that entire species is one that I'm just like, ah, I love those things. Uh, so that's another I show up at Frankie's house. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. She's like, oh, I just a bunch of these pulchra. She's like, why don't you take this home? Take this home. Because <laughs> I've always, I've always like thought the cocci were cool. But, like a lot of this like yeah. cool stuff. Like I hate buying snakes online. I hate mm. it. I know it's yeah. like the norm, and you gotta like get over it. But like I've got like a lot of the stuff. Most of like the oxy stuff I had to get online, but yeah. mm-hmm. I try to get stuff at the shows if I can, or like from people, and even if I have to drive two hours, a couple hours, yeah, 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 I'll it's worth them. it, yeah. Because I, ha- I don't know, there's nothing worse than like, oh, your package is stuck, at, you know, the Indianapolis hub. <laughs> oh, good, mm-hmm. it's yeah, that's, that's yeah. great, great, yeah, uh, thanks, appreciate it. It's only negative fifteen degrees yeah, in Indy. That's, that's awesome. wonderful. <laughs> That's good. Yeah. That's perfect. <laughs> um, oh, but yeah, God. so <clears throat> Frankie got those in my hands, and then um, I reached out to Matt Most to get some cock's eye. Yeah. He was like, Oh, you're breeding oxies? And I was like, Yeah. He's like, Oh, well, you want to trade for some of these? And so now I have a I have some, uh, you know, Porphyracea stuff in the basement now, too. Dude, hell yeah. Hell yeah. I like the Volenti a lot, and then the Latticinctus, I like those a lot, too. The Volante, like, it, that's, like, another one. Like, if people had them in their hands, yeah, they would, like, appreciate them so much more. Because, like, they're crazy. Like, if you, like, actually have them in your hands, they're crazy looking. They're, like, this, like, yeah. peanut butter color, and mm-hmm. they have these, like, red stripes and these like chocolate b- colored bands like they're insane mm-hmm. looking in person but it's like hard to like appreciate it in a picture yeah, yeah 100%. and they, they're there's such like a unique shape to their head and like the way that it connects to their body it's just it, it is one of those things where you really need to see them in person to like fully appreciate them because like i think a lot of people just see like pictures of cock's eye they're like Oh, it's like a red striped snake. That's pretty cool. And it's like, no, 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 no. You gotta like see this in person to see like how vibrant the color is yeah, in person. They look fake. They look yeah, like they they're really not real. Do. Like when I yeah. opened the box, I was like, this guy sent me like rubber snakes. Like, rubber what snakes. Like, what? Yeah, because they have like they almost have like a glossy sheen to yeah. their scales. So yeah, if you if you pull it out and it's like it happens to catch some light, you're like, oh, what's this weird like? <laughs> just bizarre moist <laughs> snake <laughs> yeah they're they're really cool though i like them hell yeah, yeah but that's how it happens uh what else did frankie send that's me home funny. with uh <laughs> fox, fox snake that was like another one like, oh, i never oh, heard of fox snake before yeah. and he's like <laughs> he's like oh take this snake home i was like is this it's like a because he said like it was like a like a new hatchling and he I was like, what is this, a black rat snake? I was like, I don't want this. Like, I'm not taking this. Yeah. Home. He's like, he's like, no. And he like pulls out like the adult and it's like has this like crazy copper colored head. I'm like, yeah. What? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Like, what is this? Like, how are these not more popular? Like, I don't know. Dude, fox snakes are wholly underrated. They're such a cool species. Yeah, they really are cool. Oh, oh heck yeah. Oh, that makes sense That's that Frankie cool. would have those. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> yeah. He always like, yeah. He'll like pull out like, oh, look what I got. I'm like, where do you get this stuff? <laughs> <laughs> oh man, that's awesome though. Yeah, and he's awesome. He just he wants everyone to be like enjoying it. Like he's like, yeah, take yeah. this home. Yeah, take this home yeah. with you. Like, yeah, I got I got a couple of them, so I could send some home to your house. Yeah. I bought extra to hand them out. Don't worry. Yeah. It's okay. Yeah, take some over here. <laughs> I went to Costco and got all these cocks eye. Here, just yeah. take a couple. No. <laughs> no. Oh, man. That's awesome, dude. <laughs> dude that is yeah, so funny. Oh, man. Is there another... Uh, I know you're talking about downsizing, but is there another species that like has your attention that you're like, man, if if Frankie gets one of these, I better get a call. <laughs> I, I don't know. I really enjoy uh, the garter snakes. 
right now. Mm-hmm. I don't know. They're like I don't know how God of Snakes are more popular too. I don't know if it's like the weird legality. I think that's yeah. Movies. It has to do with the legalities of it. Yeah. But um, I don't know. They remind me of lizards. Like they're not even like snakes. They're like little lizards. <laughs> they're so yeah, active. Yeah. They're communal. You can yeah. set up basking areas for them, and they'll all utilize it. They're they are yeah. much more interactive. Yeah, I can I can see that. Yeah, yeah. that's like another think, like the uh, keeping the I've been like cohabiting the Ganyasoma. Yeah, you know I thought like oh everyone's gonna throw me in prison because I'm cohabiting. <laughs> Party's <laughs> over. I'm going to jail. I'm cohabiting. But like I don't know like. I feel like it's like so much more like rewarding. I don't know. Mm-hmm. So, cause like I'm giving like all the snakes like bigger spaces cause I can like fit more in a space. And I don't know. I feel like they do interact with each other and like they don't seem stressed. I know some snakes, I try to uh, cohab and all the, um, proceed together and no, they can't handle that. It. Doesn't, <laughs> doesn't work. It. Doesn't yeah. work. Yeah. <laughs> it's uh, like one all... of them gets going and then the it sets them all off yeah <laughs> yeah but you know, i really like co and i'm doing russian tortoises i would like to like get something going outside for them kind of like that'd uh, be cool it's the guy the guy from new jersey mm, oh i forget uh, his name is that the turtle uh, guy Gar- um, garden state tortoise yeah, yeah. yeah yeah i've been getting inspired by like his setups kind of cool I love, like, yeah. something like that there's a uh one of my buddies up in maine i don't know if you'd want me to name him or not but uh one of my friends up in maine uh he overwintered his russian tortoises outside he's like yeah we got 24 inches of snow but i built them like a subterranean area where they could get to and, and they were fine yeah that's crazy crazy dude <laughs> yeah, I, I burmated them the first time this year yeah um which was like really stressful for me because like the winter was so weird. Like I was more nervous because like it, I was like it's not going to be cold. It didn't enough. get cold enough. Yeah. Right. 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 So I only like did it for like six weeks, and I was like, I can't keep them in here because it's like <laughs> it's like fifty five degrees. It's like, <clears throat> and they're like yeah. thriving. They're like uh, Mother Russia. <laughs> right. <Yeah. laughs> well, yeah, yeah. I'd like open it up, and they're like, oh, they're like awake in here. Like what? Yep. Just so I can do it. I cut that early this year. <laughs> yeah, there's always next year, you know. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, my kids that's love true. the tortoises, though. They're like little, little horses. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you, know, you you feed them and they chase them around outside. Heck yeah! They as long as have... they're not riding them, it's okay. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> right. right. They do have fun personalities. That's for sure. Yeah. Yeah. Are there any other tortoise species that you want to work with? Um, I don't. Not that like we can. I'd love to do the Egyptian tortoises, but I don't. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I don't see that happening. Um. And then we can't keep um. The pancake tortoises in mass. Ooh, tomato, right. tomato, tomato, yeah. tomato. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, you remember math. <laughs> yeah, yeah. where they had frill dragons banned and shit, bro. They... Uh, uh, don't miss it. Uh, don't miss it. Uh, yeah. uh, don't get me wrong. I miss. I miss you guys. I don't miss Massachusetts and New England. Right, right, right. <laughs> that oh, shit was messed up. But hey, yeah. Yeah, it is what it is. Have you looked at like um like Herman's tortoises and stuff? I have, I have. I mean, I, I actually did. I did get a um, Western Hermans. It's actually over at Joe Kenny's house. Joe Kenny has. Hey, it. <laughs> heck yeah. Um, heck yeah. But I don't know. They, they're just like they were too hard to like source more of them. Yeah. It's like get a group yep. together. True. Those I, we had some marginated tortoises at Nerd, and those ones were really interesting because of like they had like the elongated shells and like yeah. the big flares are on the back marginal scales. Those are really cool too. Yeah, I've been really trying to do like smaller stuff because I, I oh, like doing. I was gonna like, say you should just go balls to the wall and get an Aldabra. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> There's nowhere to put it at my house. No. <laughs> 
it'll it's make okay. a place. Don't worry. Yeah, yeah, it's fine. You you, yeah. you get a baby. You've got at least ten years before you got to move down south. It's okay. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> before that, that's like an actual horse. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Legit. That one, the kids can ride. Yeah. And you won't need a lawnmower. It'll be great. Yeah, bro. <laughs> oh gosh. It's funny at uh, at Tinley, I was chatting with uh, with Aubrey because he's got his yeah. Aldabra tortoise. He's, like, yeah. he's like, yeah, man, I'd never mow the lawn ever. Yep. Like that's what I have these for. <laughs> I'm like, hey, dude, I, if it works. <laughs> I just think about trying to move them, and I'm like, oh man, that stresses me out. <laughs> well, dude, he's like... he he's got to get a U-Haul. Yeah. He literally gets a U-Haul to move the big tortoises. It's insane. Joe has one. He brings it to like the shows and stuff and like has kids take pictures with it. And it's like, yeah, what's that thing weigh? Like, a couple <laughs> hundred like oh, it's a cool 175, you know? Yeah, no problem. It's not, it's no not problem. big yet. It, it's, it's it's a pretty boulder. Big. It's pretty big. <laughs> oh, I know. <laughs> <sighs> yeah, compared yeah. to little Herman's or Greek yeah. tortoise or something, you're like, oh, God. <laughs> oh, man. That's crazy. Yeah. I would really love, I know this is like against the law for reptile keepers, but I would love to do like, like a huge enclosure with those, uh, <laughs> what are those? They look like Russian tortoises, but they're from, um, oh my God. Slocatas, African spur guys? No, no. They're from where the oxies are from. Oh, uh, oh my God. I don't um, know, fucking... Indonesia. Yes. But they have, uh, but... It, they look like Russian tortoises almost, but they're like. It's not the plowshares, right? I don't know what they're called, but it'd be cool to do like a big, like 10 or 12 foot enclosure and have like a bunch of different like species in there. It'd be cool. <laughs> There's a whole shit ton of them. Yeah. Like a loop. I mean, that's, that's basically what we did at the, the cave up at Nerd. We had. Fucking five, six species in there. We had sulcatas, redfoots, marginated, Russians, Hermans. Yeah. Or no, I'm not even thinking that. Like, do those and then have, like, red tail green rats in there and, like, uh, <laughs> maybe some, like, super small lizards that might be able to hide from the red tail green rats. Just, yeah. yeah, just create the entire ecosystem. It's perfect. Yeah. <laughs> Something like that would be cool. My, you'd have to do all the mostly herbivorous stuff because I know that a red foot tortoise would see a snake and be like, "Oh, I'm Body's eating that." Going down, <laughs> yeah. yeah. Bro, I love red foots, but oh my god, they're terrifying. <laughs> Dude. Yep. Don't don't take your eyes off them. <laughs> yeah. Oh, they'll, they'll grab you. Oh Sometimes. yeah. Sometimes. Yeah. Sometimes. If they're if they're hungry enough or you look good enough, <laughs> yeah. yeah, I would always have to tell like during the summertime when if like women went on the tour and they were wearing sandals and they had like red or blue nails, I'd be like, look, when we go in the cave, you cannot stand around because the tortoises will bite you. <laughs> That's true. They see it, they'd be like strawberries, blueberries. <laughs> they would just go and after them. Yeah, and the redfoots are relentless, man. They would just truck after you the whole time yeah the tortoises I feel like are when fast it, when they want to be exactly. oh yeah and when it when it comes to something like food like that's when you see the most stubborn elements of tortoise personality it's i don't care yeah. where it is i saw it it's in that direction i'm going that I'm going way until that i can yeah. get it like yeah. <laughs> oh there's Pretty not much. a door or a shoe that can stop me i'm going yeah. Yeah. <laughs> disturbing right right Oh gosh, too funny. Well, the Sulcatas would literally open up the doors to the cave. Like I, there's been there was a couple times where I come like first thing in the morning, I start walking down the hallway, and I'm like, "There's a tortoise in the hallway. There's two tortoises in the hallway. There's six tortoises in the hall. How did they get in the hallway?" And then there's the Sulcata like holding the door open. I'm like, "What are you doing, bro?" The great escape. I used to love that bird you guys the is a the capybara. Uh kookaburra. Oh kookaburra. Yeah. That was, that was cool. Hell yeah. Was Sydney cool was the bomb. Very loud. Very, very loud. And it would be loud at random times, like one o'clock in the morning. <laughs> <laughs> 
I just picture if you it, had man. one of those in your house, man, like there's no place in your house you could be without it being yeah. really freaking loud. Yeah, you'd yeah. you'd hear it everywhere. Yeah. Sheesh. Oof. Yeah. Well, pass. Okay. Pass on that. <laughs> pass on that. But yeah. heck yeah, man. we we've hit our, our hour mark, which is crazy. It doesn't feel like an hour has gone by. Which yeah, is real. which is good. Which is good. <laughs> um, but heck yeah, Jared. So we ask all of our guests a final culminating question. All One right. final question. So that question is, why are you not breeding ball pythons? No, that sure, question. No, that's not that question is. <laughs> no, the question is, what in the realm of reptiles, be it something that's in your collection or maybe something you've seen online, what in the realm of reptiles has you excited about reptiles right now? I don't know. I kind of like what I have right now. I like the stuff I have. I Heck yeah, those, ja- those Japanese forest rat snakes are cool, but I'm not Ooh. trying to buy expensive snakes right now. <laughs> <laughs> totally fair. Try and I hear you. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I mean, producing red tail green rats is always exciting. And then if you're working with mandarins and all that stuff, man, that's, that is exciting in its own right. You know? Absolutely. Yeah. Dude, that is Absolutely. really freaking cool. And if people want to see the snakes you're working with and, and what you're doing, where should people follow you online? Uh, just, oh, Jared Snake Room on Instagram. It's like, so my family members and stuff can stop complaining that I'm posting pictures of snakes. <laughs> <laughs> see, my family members, I was like, yeah, you can just unfriend me. It's okay. We're still yeah. cool, but like, yeah. I'm not, I'm just gonna. <laughs> Yeah. The, they girl, know. Like, the people I work with are like, why do you have so many snakes? Like, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Don't worry about it. They're like, why are you <laughs> your third husband? Like, leave me alone. What are you doing? <laughs> right? But, yeah. Why do you like husbands so much? Uh, <laughs> oh god, that's a riot. Well, thank you so much for coming oh, yeah, on, man. man. I appreciate yeah, you. Man. Good time. And uh, yeah, man. Any any closing remarks you'd like to leave for the people? Yeah, if you offer me two hundred dollars or one hundred and fifty dollars for a uh, uh, red tail green rat snake, I'm gonna just mail them to free to Rob and Jeremy. <laughs> <laughs> yes, somebody submit those offers. <laughs> <laughs> okay, man. Oh, man. Thank you so much for coming on. Heck Appreciate yeah, you. you, and I will. Uh, we'll catch you next time. All right, later, guys. Yeah. Bye. 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 Bye.